Today we're talking about automation within Cakewalk by BandLab. So, what is automation? What is it useful for? And how do you actually implement it within Cakewalk? We're going to get to all of that after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So before we get into this tutorial, I wanna mention that I have a playlist popping up in the top right corner now full of cakewalk tutorials ranging from beginner to advanced. So if you guys are interested in learning how to use Cakewalk, definitely check out that playlist after this video. So let's talk about automation now. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what is automation, and then we're gonna discuss how automation is useful. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about the two ways to implement automation within Cakewalk. So with that being said, let's actually get right into this tutorial and talk about what is automation. All right, so what is automation when it comes to audio mixing? So automation is just how it sounds. You're basically going to be writing something within your DAW that's going to be automating a process. And typically that's gonna be whatever parameters you want to edit that your DAW will allow you to edit. So for example, it will allow you to automate volume faders, pan knobs, and almost any parameter within a plugin, all right? So you can get pretty creative with automation. So that brings me to my next question to answer here. Why is automation useful? So why is automation useful? Well, if you ask any of the pros out there, they'll tell you that automation is an absolute must to make a mix come alive. So you'll probably find yourself wanting to use automation mostly on volume faders, and that's pretty typical. And the reason I say that is because, you know, we want to make things maybe pop in and out of mixes a little harder at certain parts of the song to just make it feel more dramatic. And you might want to also use volume automation to smooth out vocal tracks as opposed to using heavy compression on them. So there's a lot of good ways you can use volume automation. Now, Another good thing to use would be pan automation. So if you have a stereo track and you wanna keep it maybe narrow in the verses, you can do that and then have it kick open full, 100% left, 100% right when it comes in the chorus. So that's a cool way to kind of like open up a mix using pan automation. And of course, as we mentioned before, you know, you can automate almost any parameter within a plugin. And depending on what plugin it is, you can get pretty creative with it. So. That is the main reason why automation is useful because it will help make your mix become more alive and make it more dramatic and make it more enjoyable for the listener to listen to. All right, so that being said, let's actually get into how to write automation within Cakewalk. All right, so there's two different ways to get automation into Cakewalk. You can either play it in or write it in. And the first way we're gonna talk about is playing it in. And what I mean by that is, in relation to volume automation, it would be like moving a fader on a control surface or a mixing console, and that automation would be written into Cakewalk. You can also do it by using your mouse and moving the fader on the little mix console down here, where you see my mouse now, and that will actually be written in real time also. So it's very complicated to do with a mouse, and I don't recommend it. And Personally, this is actually my least favorite. I actually like to write in the automation, which we'll talk about next. So before we can even do any of this, we actually need to open up our automation uh, lane here. So if you go up to your track here, see where my mouse is here? This is a piano track here. If you go down to this little icon here, see it says automation lanes, click this. And now you see that we have this little lane that popped open underneath the track. So I'm gonna open this up a little bit here and you'll see that it's on volume. So as I mentioned before, there's other parameters we can automate. So if you click this here, you're gonna see all the different parameters in here that we can automate, and you're gonna even see plugins in here, and then other options by going to maybe like choose parameter, and you'll see all the other parameters that Cakewalk makes available within a plugin that you can automate, okay? 
but we're not gonna get into all that. We're gonna talk about strictly volume automation today, all right? So for our first example here, as I mentioned, we are going to play in some automation. So what we need to do is we actually need to click the little W button here, which is right. And then all we need to do is simply play the track. And as I move this fader here, you see it has little red brackets over it. You're gonna see this automation written in the automation lane here, okay? So I'm gonna hit play now and then watch this happen in real time. Okay, pretty cool, huh? So you can simply write an automation by using a fader there. Again, it's not all that intuitive using your mouse. So what you wanna do after the automation is actually written in, you wanted to uncheck the W button here, and then you wanna to go to the R here and click that, and this is read. So this means that as you play the track, it's actually going to read the automation. So now let's actually play the track and you'll see the volume fader move with the moves that we made. All right, let's give it a listen. All right, pretty nifty there. So that is our first way of getting automation into Cakewalk. So I'm gonna do a control Z here on my keyboard and delete what we did there. And now we're gonna talk about the second way of getting automation into Cakewalk, and that is writing it in, which is my personal favorite. All right, so there's a couple different ways that you can write automation into Cakewalk. You can go up to the draw tool here and then right click and you have these options for freehand, pattern, line, sign, triangle, square, saw, and random. I personally don't recommend using those. However, I will say that the random option is pretty cool if you have some hi-hats that are maybe just from, I don't know, a virtual instrument there and their velocities are all like the same and they're kind of boring and they sound fake. You can use the random automation there to make them sound a little bit more real. So that's kind of cool, all right? so. What I like to do is just use the smart tool. And I like to simply just kind of hover a line here and you see you get a little pencil tool. You can simply click, you get a dot, get a dot here. Then you can actually click and drag also. So I can just start dragging and see, you have these options like this. So I can also take it off snap here because I'm obviously snapping to the grid as you can see. And I can more fine tune it by doing it this between the grid, all right? So for me, this is just a little bit easier than using the draw tool. I get to put things where I want it and I have a lot of control over it. So typically when you're writing an automation, you wanna pick a start and ending point. So for example, if I wanted to modify some volume automation in these passages right here where my mouse is hovering, I could pick a starting point right here and I could pick a end point right here. Now, those are not points that I want to edit. I want to edit the stuff in between it. Now, the reason you need a starting and end point is because that if you were to adjust these points, you're gonna see that if I adjust the end point here, see stuff after it moves, and that's not what we want. We want everything after it to stay you know, stagnant. So I'm gonna do control Z here. So for example, if I wanted to make some adjustments in here now, I can just grab, you know, a node here and start moving it. You'll see that's just stuff in between the lines is moving, kind of like I did over here, for example, all right? So you can put as many nodes as you want, make it as crazy as you want, and you can smooth it out a bit if you put more nodes in, you know, like that. You're not limited. You could do as many nodes as you want and make any kind of crazy pattern as you want. Now, this is just me showing you how automation works. This is not typically how you would use it in a mix, all right? So. I just wanted to let you know that. So we should listen to it anyway, and let's actually just you know hear what this automation did to the piano. So let's give it a listen. All right, so as you can see, the fader moves just as it did as when we played in the automation. You can write it in, it works just the same. So. That is how you get automation into Cakewalk. And you know, the choice is yours, whether you want to play it in or write it in, however you want to do it, it's up to you. So I hope you guys liked this tutorial and I hope you learned a lot. If you did, give it a thumbs up. 
please subscribe because I love making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know how new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.